Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this little old lady is what we're making today. So, as you can see, she is a <clears throat> pin cushion. <laughs> so, we'll go over some of the stuff that I used. So, a lot of this is going to be scrap yarn stuff because she's so small. Um, this dress I made with the Red Heart Really Red, the Red Heart Soft Collection. Um, so, you don't need a whole lot of that. I'm going to use this for the video though. This is just an old, um, this is just an old Christmas sparkle that's worsted that I'm going to be using instead of this because I ran out of this stuff. This brown, um, is again just scrap yarn. It's just so very little, but I also used it for the cane. You don't need to use these colors either. I'm just showing you these colors. Now this cane, I used this wire to make the cane. But um, <clears throat> you really got to mess around with it to get her to stand. Now I did change the design a little bit and I made this bottom bigger for the video. But this cane should help her stand and it really just doesn't. So I'm going to use my thicker wire. So I'll put that on the screen. This one you can try it if you want to. It might make a difference since I've changed the pattern to make the base bigger. It, it may make a difference. Again, this gray is just going to be scrap. Even her face and her hands, I'm just using scrap yarn for it. So, and then scrap black for the big mouth. These little uh, eyeglasses I got off of Amazon. They come in multiple glasses come in a package so I'll put that on the screen and then this package of pearls I also got from Amazon I'll put that on the screen so <laughs> lots to uh, lots to do as far as buying stuff for the video unless you already have it um, but uh, Everything else is just going to be scrap yarn, except for probably your dress color. Let's just jump right into this. So I'm using a four millimeter for everything in this project, um, just because half of my stuff is scrap yarn and I have no idea <laughs> what hook it takes. And this is being built in Amigurumi, so I'm just gonna keep it safe and use my four millimeter G hook. So we're going to start with the dress itself. So get whatever color you're using and make a magic ring of six single crochets. If you hate the magic ring or you don't know how to do one, you can do a chain two and then put six single crochets into the first stitch or the first chain that you do. It'll be exactly the same. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So because this is being built in amigurumi, there's no slip stitching, there's no chaining. You go directly into your stitch and you use a stitch marker to mark that first stitch. And then stitch number two can go into that same space. Two single crochets in each stitch all the way around will give you a total of 12 stitches.
Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. And this will bring it up to 18 stitches. So we're going to increase each row by six. That's number one with the marker. So your next stitch will be the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 30 stitches. We're working from the big butt down, in case you're wondering. That's number one. That's three single crochets, so your next stitch gets to increase. Two single crochets in the same space. This will bring it up to 30 stitches. I'm not a fan of this yarn and I keep getting stuck on all these little sparkly thingies. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 36 stitches. That's number one. That is four single crochets and then your increase. So your last increase round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 42 stitches and that's as high as we're going. That's five single crochets and then your increase. And repeat. So this is what you should have. This is what it should look like. Nice and flat. Nice flat piece. For the next seven rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So that's my seven rows. That's what you should have. So we're going to start decreasing now. Because that's your great big butt. So now we're going to do a five single crochet decrease. 
This will bring us down to 36 stitches. That's number one. That is five single crochets. So now you've got two choices here. There's a regular decrease and then there's an invisible decrease. An invisible decrease is done in the front loops only. A regular decrease is done in the whole stitch. And it tends to leave a gap. And that's why people use the invisible one that doesn't leave a gap. And like I said, it's done in the front loops. So it doesn't leave any gaps at all. And that's why it's called invisible. So it's your choice. You can use whatever one you want. But either way, we're doing five single crochets and a decrease. So your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. And this will take you down to 30 stitches. And that's as far as we go for now. Number one is your marker. That's four single crochets. And then your decrease. So you should have 30 stitches. For the next 8 rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is my eight rows. I've already started to stuff mine just because I figured it would be easier to really pack it down up here because that's where you're going to be putting all your pins is up here. So um, this next round is going to be done in the back loops. So these guys right here. I want to keep the front loops exposed so that I can put her little dress trim on and for doing the back ones this will leave me in a position where I can easily do the bottom part. If I did the top one it would be too, if I if I did the whole stitch it would be too rounded. So if I go into the back loops, it's going to be a little more flat. You're just going to be watch how you stuff it. And then we can put this trim on to help with the balance. So that's why I chose to do that. So one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches in the back loops only.
So, now what we do from here is going to be, this should bend all down, and we're going to close up the bottom. So, let's put some more stuffing in here. Just remember, it's supposed to be a certain shape, so you don't want to you don't want to overstuff it. So your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease, and I know it seems aggressive, but if we don't pull this in properly, it'll look funny. So one single crochet and a decrease. So, we should have 20 stitches, and we're just going to decrease. This next row is just going to be decrease after decrease after decrease until you're all the way around. So that's 10 times for me all the way around and then we're just going to fasten off and cinch the rest of the way but I want you to be concerned about how much stuffing you have here. Generally before we cinch um, we make sure it's fully stuffed. This one's a little bit different. <laughs> so before we cinch we just got to make sure because this is supposed to lay like this. Like it's supposed to lay flat, like that. So we don't really want to put any more stuffing in it, but you want it to be full so that she has, you know, something she can sit up on her own. So, and then all these front loops right here, we're going to get in and we're going to put that border on and that'll kind of help her stand up on her own too. So we're cinching in, in using the front loops, in and out of the front loops. So once you've cinched, you can just pull on that. Then you're going to pop across and make a knot. Then come back the other way, make a knot. So like I said, that is supposed to be flat on the bottom. So you may just have to push your stuffing up a bit. Anyway, I'm going to weave. might help if I just get rid of my thing. So while we have the bottom exposed, let's just get that done. So I'll grab some white. You're gonna make a slip knot. Grab your hook. So this is called a twisted single crochet. So find out where your jog is here, just so that you're not starting at the beginning. Grab your front loop. You can pull through and make any stitch that you want here. Um, I'm just gonna slip stitch. I'm gonna go I'm going to pull up on this loop. This loop is the important loop to pull up on. It's not this loop. It's this loop when you're doing a twisted single. People don't tend to mention that. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to pull up another loop and I'm going to twist it. And then I'm going to pull through. So when you go in and grab your loop, before you do it, make sure you pull up on this or it'll be too tight for you after the twist to pull through. 
should be tight anyway, but it'll be super tight. Oh, I hate when your yarn frays like that. My yarn just split and now it's all frayed. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep going. So this is the important one. So just kind of remember you gotta pull back just to make that loop bigger. And this is what we're gonna put all along the bottom to help keep her upright a little bit better than she'd normally be if we didn't do this. So I'm all the way around, just about, and um, I'm going to show you what to do to avoid this jog. So I'm on my last loop. So you've got this jog here where there's, they don't match up. So I go in and pick up this post. And that's where I do my twisted single crochet. And then I latch right back into here where I started on my front loop. And I do my slip stitch and I fasten off. So ultimately, oh, I did not right there. I was close. Sometimes scrap yarn, that's what you get, I guess. So ultimately, um, that'll look even, even though it's not, do you see? And I like to tie these two before I weave these two ends, and then it just kind of all pulls together. And then it just looks like it's supposed to be like that. We tied a knot so we don't really need to go that far as far as weaving. So I just pull it out and make it round. And it's all great, it's sitting all fine just now, but seriously when I, when I, when we do the head and we sew it on, all of a sudden it'll go plunk. So not an ideal thing like I said, but so that's what we're going to do next is the head. So you'll need your skin color. I'm just using this scrap brown for my skin color. So I'll make a magic ring of six single crochets or uh, chain two and put six single crochets into that first chain. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. <laughs> your first stitch gets the marker, not your second one. So two single crochets in each stitch should give you a total of 12 stitches when you're completely around.
So your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. That's one single crochet, so you jump right into your increase. Two single crochets in the same space. So you're going to repeat this all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. Next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches, and that's as high as we're going. I didn't want to make her head too big because it pulls her down, right? That's two single crochets and then your increase. So you should have 24 stitches. For the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So this is what you should have. We're gonna start decreasing. Then we're going to put some eyes in before we go too, too far. So two single crochets and a decrease is this next round. So number one is the marker, that's number two, and then your decrease. So I'm still going to do my invisible decrease. So I've got one more row and then we're going to change color. Uh, I want to put the eyes in. It's hard to tell because I got the wig cap on or the wig or the hair. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe six and seventh row from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So just right in this. Make sure this is at the back when we do this. So I just use these tiny little, tiny little eyes. Now the trick is I've got about two visible stitches in between there. The trick is matching them up with your eyeglasses. That's the trick. So before you put the backs on, if you have your glasses already, those seem awful small. I think I need I think I need the next size up. There we go. So these eyes are too, too small. Now that seems better. So now that I've messed around here, we can get our glasses out. just to make sure that they're going to be 
lined up okay. Yeah, I think mine are lined up okay. You can see that. So, two stitches in between. Well, kind of. That's what I've got going on for my eyes. And then the hair is going to fill this space. So, we've got... Gosh. I think I want to raise these. Go up one. Go up one row. It just seems so low to me. So I'm going to go up one row because I don't like that. That seems a little more reasonable. So we're going to put the nose there. Little tiny mouth. I mean, there's not much space before we... Before we change to red. It's only a couple more rows, so... Yeah, I'm going to go up there for my glasses. Or for my eyeballs. Put my backs in. I don't know how super important it is. I mean, as long as this isn't a doll going to a kid how super important it is for these backs to go on. I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in here. So your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch around. So, I'm going to finish stuffing mine up. I don't want to put a whole lot because I just don't want it to be heavy. But, i got to put a face on this gal. We also got to put a wig cap, so I mean, we got to really make sure it's stuffed decently. <laughs> but I don't want to stuff it decently because I don't want it to be heavy, so... There's her little noggin. So we're going to switch to red. Oh, so this last stitch, I don't want to finish with brown. This last stitch, I want to finish with my red. So I'm going to finish my last stitch with the red. We will not be going back to the brown for the head. We are done. So with the red, I want you to do the back loops only. So we're going to leave all these front loops exposed to put our little white trim on there. Sorry, I know that wasn't in focus, but... So back loops only, one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches.
So staying with your red, your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase using the full stitch. That's one single crochet, so your next stitch goes to increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat, so bring it up to 18 stitches. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase and this will bring it up to 21 stitches. The reason I did this is because I just want a, a little increase. Had I done the next increase that's common, that would have brought me to 24 stitches so I didn't want that. I just want to go to 21 so we're going to do a five single crochet increase. Your marker is number one. That is five single crochets and then your increase. So bring it to 21 stitches. So this is what you should have. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 21 stitches and then we're going to start to decrease. So this is what you should have. We're going to start decreasing now. We're going to do five single crochets and a decrease. It's number one. That is five single crochets and then my decrease. Now I just want you to do one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. So I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in this. I don't really, really want to overstuff this because it's, I just really don't want the weight. Your last round, your last decrease round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. And then you can fasten off. So we whip stitch this closed. 
Well, you can you can sew it on any way you want. I whip stitched it closed, and then I mattress stitched it to the body. So you need a sewing tail. We're not going to sew her um, until um, we do the rest of the the hair, the face, the everything, and then we'll sew her to the body. So we'll kind of make everything first. So she got sewed to the body this way with her head turned like that. She needs to be whip stitched this way. So you're not going to see any of this funny duddy stuff because she's going to um, have a shawl over her. So you're not going to see any of this funny stuff, but this is where once it's sewn on it gets twisted. Now if you want to sew her on now, you, I mean you can, you can sew her on. That's how she's going to get sewn on. So she's very hoity-toity. And that's about where she gets sewn on, so. Oh, we can sew her on. I just, you just, you just pick up the whole thing to do that. So I'm just gonna mattress stitch her, which means I'm just gonna pick up two stitches from her body, and then a couple of stitches, well, a, a post, not stitches. Post from her body, a post from her Torso, torso, body. And then you pull. And then you gotta do the back, because you gotta make sure that she sits up like this and you've got to come pretty high on the back So that's how I've sewed mine on. And again, she's going to have a shawl, so. And if you don't find that yours is upright enough, just go back up higher to pull her back with your mattress stitch. But I think mine is perfectly fine, so. So there we go. <laughs> like I said, she'll look better once uh, once the shawl's on. Oh, that's not too bad. See, I didn't think she was going to stand up on her own. Now, we still don't have the arms on yet, but um, when I made my first one, because my bottom was so skinny, she fell right over as soon as the head was on. But this one's standing up, so expanding this bottom might have been a super duper good thing she's still leaning I can see that she's leaning so the cane will certainly help so um yeah next thing we'll just uh 
we'll uh, start, we'll do the hair next. So I got my gray for my hair, but you can do whatever color you want. We'll start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. After your first stitch, that's where the marker goes. So you should have a total of 12 stitches when you're done. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's number one. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Repeat. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and that's as far as we're going with our increases. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So that's my two rows. This is what you should have. At this point, we're going to chain one and we're going to turn and I want you to do 23 extended single crochets. So by extended single crochet, I mean go into your stitch, pull through the first loop, then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. That's what I mean by an extended single crochet. So you're going to do those all the way around. The stitch your marker is in, we are not touching. So this last stitch that has the marker, we're not touching. So you can fasten off, which means just right here, fasten off. Take your marker out. So just be careful when you're weaving this in that you don't pull too tight because this is her her bangs and the reason why we chained one and went in the other direction is just to get this look.
So it sits back like that. You just need room for eyebrows up here if you wanted to do them, and of course the glasses. The glasses you can put in whenever you want because they're not going to move once they're in there. They've got these little grips on them that they're just not going to move. So, And then you can decide whether you want eyebrows or not. I don't know if I'm going to do eyebrows on this lady, but you can make the decision. I don't think I will because I think it's just too much, but we still got to do a little bit of a nose. <coughs> And then her open mouth, I mean, you can do a, I guess you can do an eyeball if you wanted to. Yeah, like something like that. She's supposed to be going like, oh, <gasps> because she's getting stabbed in the butt with all these pins. So I sewed mine on my last one, and I think it looks absolutely horrible. I also think the eyebrows look horrible too, just because there's not a whole lot of room. So I may just use this for her surprised expression so the only little thing we got to do is sew, sew on the hair make the bun and then put a n little nose I just sewed it on with the same material and then yeah we can kind of move past the hell oh, the earrings the little pearl earrings those get glued in so I think we'll kind of leave that to last um, this mouth gets glued in as well I really think that's the uh, that's the way I'm gonna go with the mouth I don't know if you noticed, but I did do another whip stitch and I pulled her back a little bit more, in case you didn't notice. So um, I'm going to sew this, this um, hair on. But I'm going to use glue just because this is just a pin cushion and I just want to tack the hair on I don't really want to so that part in her hair is just her bangs right don't really think anything's going to happen to her head. I think the glue's probably good enough, but I'm just going to tack it down in a few places. So I think her head's, her hair is pretty secure. So we can move on to the little bun at the top of her head. So we're going to start the bun with a magic ring of six single crochets. And your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch for a total of 12. Oh, 
our next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. Because I just wanted a tiny, tiny increase here. So for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches and then you can fasten off. That'll be your fun. So you can fasten off with a sewing tail. Just gets a little bit of stuffing and then sew to the top of the head. And sew like that to the top of the head. So we can put a little nose on her. Just need a little piece of your skin color. And then all I did was find the spot that I wanted the nose. So my glasses go here. So it makes sense to put the nose here for the glasses to sit on. So I'm just going to grab a couple of pieces of yarn and I'm just going to go over a number of times, back and forth. Or grab the post or whatever, however you want to do it. You're just going to go over back and forth a few times. And then that's it. That's all I did for the nose. So that's it for Grandma's head. So next we can do the arms. While we're making the arms, oh, let me not forget this part. So let's glue our, um, I just glued these on. Let's glue on our earrings and then we can set her aside and let it dry while we do the arms and the shawl. So I'm going to set her aside and uh, she can dry while I'm, while we're doing the arms. All right, <laughs> now the arms. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets.
We're going to start this off with a one single crochet increase. So this will bring it up to nine stitches. That's one single crochet and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. For the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. So I'm on my last stitch and I'm going to change to red. With red, I'm going to do the back loops only, and I'm going to increase at the same time. So again, these here are your back loops, and I'm going to do a two single crochet increase. I don't technically need a marker, it's just a habit. That's my two single crochets, and then my next back loop gets the increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. This will bring it up to 12 stitches. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in the full stitch for 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. And now I just want you to do one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So let's put some stuffing in this before we continue. I'm just going to put my marker stitch in. We have to sew a cane to your hand, so you're going to have to stuff the hand. And then we sew this to the body, so you're going to have to stuff that too. So. Oh, 
all these front loops that we're leaving exposed on the neck we did on the neck and on the hands we're gonna come back with the white and we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the bottom of the dress I think that's good enough for me for now we're gonna start to decrease so I've already done my first stitch that's with my marker we're gonna do a three single crochet decrease so that's number one with my marker that's three single crochets and then I'm just doing a regular decrease which is just going into the full stitch you can do whichever one you want Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to nine stitches. That's number one, that's number two, and then your decrease. Put some stuffing in this. Your last row before we fasten off is just going to be one single crochet in each of those nine stitches. So you can fasten off. You need a cinching and a sewing. Or a whip stitching. However you want to do it. Um, my other one I just I cinched, but you know what? I don't didn't actually like the way it looked, so I think I'm just gonna whip stitch the top of this. So um, I'm not gonna completely fill it. But I did go like up to here, but this part I'm not going to completely fill just because I prefer the look of it when you sew it to the body um, whip stitched. So whip stitch is just going stitch for stitch. Generally in the back loops, but I think we all just do it in a full stitch. sure what this is all about. So, um, you can go ahead and make your other one. I'm going to put the pattern on the screen and I'll meet you right back here. So I'm just finishing up my second arm with a whip stitch. So that's how much I have out of my scrap after doing the head and the two arms. So that's all I would need. So that's not bad. 
So let's get our weight. There's scrap weight. Everything is scrap in this project. And we're gonna make a magic ring. We'll do the arms first because I think my ears, my earrings are still drying. And find our front, find our jog where our front loops are. And we're gonna reattach. However you want to do it, whether it's a slip stitch or however. And then we're going to go back into the same stitch, but make sure you pull up. We're going to do the same twisted single crochet. So just make sure you pull up on that one loop that we talked about before. So when I get back around to this jog area, I just used the post. And then I'm going to go back into my stitch I started with, slip stitch. But anyway, that's a little trim around your arms. So you can go ahead and do your other one and then I'll meet you back here and we'll do the neck. Or you can do the neck on your own, whatever you want. I mean, now that you know what we're doing. And I didn't do these colors. I mean, this is the color that she was with the picture that I was sent when it was requested by Cynthia um, so I just kind of tried to copy the colors but you know it's very Victorian plus come Christmas time it would kind of suit anyway go ahead and get your other arm done and I will meet you back here to do the neck or you can just do the neck So we do the exact same thing for the neck. If you remember, we did back loops right here. So you've got all these front loops to get into to do the twisted single crochet. I should have done this before, but I didn't think about it. I thought about it after when I was doing the arms. I was like, oh yeah, I didn't do the uh, cuff around the neck yet. So I'm going to have to re-glue my earrings. So that makes it, that makes it so good. So I'll just re-glue. I'm gonna do probably hot glue this time. Wait for my gun to heat up. We can sew on these arms. 
then while we're making the cane, I'll just hot glue the earrings back in. No big deal. So, these arms. Um, now I guess it's up to you where you sew them on. Just make sure that they're kind of angled down for the cane. So I'm not going to sew them underneath or around on the side or anything because I need to be able to move them to wherever the cane's going to be and then they're going to be sewed to the cane. So I just wanted to make sure they were kind of even up here. So now that all this stuff is on her, push my bottom up and see if she stands. Yeah, she's because now the arms are on and everything is on, she's side heavy again. So you can't win for losing. So let's get our dark brown, our wire. And we'll get this uh, cane made so she can stand up <laughs> on her own. Okay, let me start. <laughs> I don't know how big to cut it yet, so um, I'm going to just kind of get my dark brown and start my cane and it'll give me an idea of how big to make this once the cane is done and it's pretty super duper quick but I also want to make sure it's gonna fit where I just sewed my arms on too so we're gonna chain four do three single crochets. So that's the width of it, not the height of it. Chain one, turn your work. For the next 14 rows, I just want you to put three single crochets in each of these <laughs> stitches. Or one single crochet in each of these stitches for 14 rows. So that's my 14 rows. You can fasten off with a long sewing tail. This guy can kind of get tucked away because we don't need him to be in the way. Oh, right, you can keep him actually for probably doing the bottom. So we just need to cut our um, wire to fit into here. So 
So once the wire is cut, we just sew around it. So I have enough to sew this to the hands, so I just that's why I just brought it back up. But if you don't have enough, you can just grab a second piece. So that's our cane. So now you just have to bend it to shape it. And then she's going to be holding on to it. I need to move this again. something pokey in here I need to cover. So then she kind of just holds holds on to her cane like this. This part is super awkward. Trying to get her to hold this cane is is not easy. So I did a oops, pulled way too hard. I pulled way too hard. Very awkward. Yeah, you're still going to have to mess around with the with the wire unless you do a whole entire base crochet a base around this whole entire bottom part which might not be a bad idea. You can put grass or something because she is very it's this this cane holds the entire thing up but if you're you know putting in pins and you're pulling out pins she's falling over all the time so maybe we should do a base that we'll consider to be optional for the video but maybe maybe required 
And we'll do it in green or something so that it looks like grass. Because a cute design, but um, like I said, it's it's not convenient when it's falling over all the time. So, um, yeah, we'll get that done. Um, for now, we'll move on to the shawl. So I used a 5 millimeter H for this with my brown. So you're going to do a chain 2. And in this first stitch, I want you to put three double crochets. Chain two, turn your work. In this first stitch, I want you to put three double crochets. Chain one, skip one, and in this next stitch, put three, which is your last one. I'm stuck on something. So skip a stitch and in this last stitch you're going to put three double crochets. Chain two, turn your work. And you're going to repeat that. So in this first stitch, you're going to do three double crochets. You're going to chain one, you're going to skip one, and you're going to do three double crochets. Chain one, skip one, Three double crochets. So now we come to a row like this where we only really have one stitch left in our turning chain. So we're going to chain one. We're going to put in that space right there. Chain two, turn your work. One more row, right into your first stitch. Actually, you can go right into the space if you want. Put three doubles. Chain one, skip one, three doubles. Chain one, skip one, into the space you can put three doubles. Chain one, skip one. Chain one, skip one. So we went from three to five, made this curve around. Chain one and in this last space, so 
So that's what it should look like. We had to squeeze in five to make the curve. Because we're not making a typical shawl. So that's our three rows. At this point, I want you to chain one and turn. We're going to do one single crochet. So you could do it in the space if you want, if it's easier. Chain two. Skip one. One single crochet. Chain two. Skip one. Into the space. One single crochet. Chain two. Skip one. One single crochet. Chain two. Skip one. Into the space. Just keep repeating that because we're going to come back and use these holes. So we're right on the end, so chain two, kind of go into this turning chain space, right there, and make your last single crochet. So you can fasten off right here. When you fasten off, you can. we're going to add another piece of string. So this can be extremely short because it's just for weaving. This gets weaved in, and this gets weaved in, and then we'll come and grab another piece of yarn to come through all these that chain two, skip one this that we just did. We're going to weave another piece through, and that'll be what we tie, we use for ties. So, I've cut off a strand of brown, um, quite, quite a length, an arm's length. You can probably, you can trim it up later. So, I'm gonna, I, I don't want to weave the whole entire way. I'll show you. So it's gonna be sitting on her like this with the point at the back. We just need to have our ties here to tie around her. We don't need to tie all of it around her. We just need these spaces. So if you've got it sitting on her the way you want it, I would just simply mark your spaces. And then that's as short as we're weaving. So I just need my ties here, but because I came up here, I'm just going to go down through the stitch that way. So I know my ties are long. You can do whatever you want. I just wanted to make sure I was going to have enough. So I'm just going to cut them off. I may cut them off again after I tie with it, but I'm not sure. Just like that for her shawl. It doesn't need to be down. I mean, you're going to be sticking pins in here and all over the, the place. If you wanted to sew it right to her, you could, but now let's make a base for her. Off camera, I kind of whipped one up, so um, I got my other gal 
glued to it. That's the base so that she stands up on her own. Now, this one's not quite dry, so she's not that sturdy when I got pins in there. But hopefully this base helps her stand up on her own. So I'm going to do it in green. So if you got some green, get some green and I'll meet you right back here. So it's green. So I just took my mat away so that you could see what I was doing. So um, back to my four millimeter hook, just so we make it nice and tight. We're going to chain 11. We're going to do nine single crochets. In this last space, you're going to put five single crochets in there. And it's going to want to curve around, and I want you to follow the curve. You see how it's curving this way? I want you to follow it. Tighten your slip knot. And then working in the round, you're going to put nine single crochets back up the other side. Just make sure you find that stitch right next to your slip knot. This is my ninth stitch. I'm going to cut off this thing at the back. need that in our way that's for sure so our next row we're gonna mark we're gonna use our marker we're gonna put two single crochets in this first stitch but I want you to marker the first one and then put stitch number two in that same space then I want you to do seven single crochets And then I want you to do two half doubles. This green is called Lush, by the way. It's from Craftsmart. You don't have to use green. You can use whatever color you want. So that's my two half doubles. Over the course of these next three stitches, the ones just at the top here, I want you to put two half doubles in each stitch. Then I want you to do two half doubles. Seven single crochets. I'm just mimicking what I did on the other side. And then this last stitch is going to get two single crochets to mimic what I started with. Round three, the next two stitches are going to get two single crochets each, but don't forget after the first stitch that's where your marker goes. Now I want you to do four single crochets. That's my four single crochets, and then this next stitch can get an increase. Then four single crochets. Now 
the next seven stitches is going to get two half doubles in each. So that brings you all the way around. And now I want you to do four single crochets. And an increase. Then four single crochets. an increase yeah it's just gonna look like a little foot <laughs> on four I want you to do one single crochet increase three times so that's one single crochet and then your next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space two more times So that's my one single crochet increase three times. And now I want you to do five single crochets. That's my five single crochets. And now I want you to do two half double increase two times. That's two half doubles and then the increase of two half doubles in the same space. One more time. And now over the course of the next nine stitches, I want you to put two half doubles in each. That is my two half doubles over the course of nine stitches. And now I want you to do an increase and a two half double two times. So we're doing it over here. We did two half double increase two times. We have to do it backwards. <laughs> so using your half doubles, you're going to do an increase in this next stitch and then two half doubles, one in each and repeat that same process. Two half doubles in this stitch and then one each half double in the next two stitches. Now I want you to do five single crochets. One single crochet increase and then one single crochet to finish the row. So that's going to be our base. You can fasten off. This doesn't need to be anything. We're not sewing, we're not doing anything, we're just just going to weave in this little tail. So I've got my hot glue gun warming up. If you need to do that, do that and then find yourself some felt. So I've got some of this 
sparkly, foamy stuff. It's not felt, but I'm hoping it helps. And I traced my foot onto the back of this using a pen. When I cut it though, I'm gonna kinda cut in the lines because I, I want it to be just a titch smaller than what I just traced. If you don't have any of this stuff, I'm sure felt will be perfectly, oops. I'm sure felt will be perfectly fine. So I kind of want to put it on the bottom of this and then glue my doll onto this. So this is still going to be the main part. It's just whatever's back here is going to keep this nice and firm. And that's why I chose to use the um, this stuff. So I'm just going to hot glue. So that makes it pretty sturdy. Had to get another stick. So I think I'm good there. So now I just gotta glue my lady. And my cane. I know it's hard for you to see what I'm doing. And that's gonna help her stand up. That's gonna be great. I'm glad I decided to do that. Yeah, much, much better. So there we have it. Little old lady standing on her little piece of grass. Like I said, you can put eyebrows on if you want. That's, I think, the only thing I didn't do that I did on my last one. But... There you go. A little, and she's still sparkly underneath. Well, f for me, I got those on Amazon. I get like a whole package of these, like, I mean, thousands of them, all different sparkly colors. These little foam sheets, that's what I used. So, now I'm probably gonna see that little daub of glue underneath the cane, but that's okay because she stands up and I don't have a problem and now I can put pins in and out of her and she's not going to fall over on me. Like I said, that design was cute, but it was not really versatile. But now I can do whatever I want to this lady and she's not falling over, so. Thanks for joining me, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.